one of the advantages of living where I do is that the chap at the bottom of the lane where I live is a steam engine aficionado and because there's a transport festival in town right now a lot of his mates have come round and they've got steam engines as well so I'll just show you these for entertainment value I'm down by the uh, Trent Mersey Canal where I walk my dogs. As you can see, there's a bunch of canal boats here. Four Seasons. I love the names of these. Brilliant names they've got. I always want to like own a canal boat, but it's very expensive, and, uh, and I get the sense that it's probably nicer to look at them than it is to own one, because I think you're a bit probably constrained. But I do like them. I like the whole the whole canal thing, really. In fact, I like kind of 19th century technology generally, really. Uh, canal boats and uh, bridges, steam engines, steam trains, looms, you know, the whole industrial revolution stuff. And that whole kind of scientific technological society that evolved around that. You know, people like the Lunar Society and uh, oh, Josiah Wedgwood and Joseph Priestley and Erasmus Darwin and all those guys who were completely smitten by that whole technology. He would spend hours of a weekend going out to look at, well, I don't know, the Anderson boat lift or, um, or some miracle of 19th century industrial architecture or something like that. It's just brilliant. I love it. I think one of the reasons I like it, I think I've probably talked about this before actually, it feels very familiar when I'm saying it. I think one of the reasons why I like it is because it, I think, you know, that, that period, the late 19th century particularly, was probably the last time that technology kind of connected with human scale operation and human scale understanding. Let's see if I can explain what I mean by that. I suppose what I mean is the, the, uh, the mechanisms that most of these things are operating by, you know, levers and pulleys and uh, things that float, uh, you know, wheels that turn, the whole kind of basic thermodynamic principles that on which these things operate. It's pretty much the same thing as the human body operates in, in its grand scale. I don't mean the, the, you know, the biochemistry or the electrochemistry of the brain or anything like that, but the scale that we operate, you know, human scale. You know, I'm walking through a landscape here and, and the things that are significant for me are things that are about the same size as myself, things like dogs and trees and gates and styles and that kind of stuff. Uh, and and I've, you know, our, I myself as a, as a human being and human beings in general have evolved at this scale. You know, we've involved a cognition that thinks in terms of human, of human scale stuff, a scale at which the the technology is the technology of the lever and the pulley and the wheel and the winch and and hydraulics and, and those kind of things. Uh, so there's something very visceral embodied about that. You know, once you get beyond the 19th century and, and into different kinds of physics and different kinds of technology, electricity, um, electromagnetic principles, the technology of the screen particularly, and the CPU, then you've left human scale behind, really. I mean, you can still understand it, but I don't think you're understanding anything like the same way. You're not understanding it by kind of analogy with your body. You're understanding it through mathematics or through equations or through, or through metaphors. Uh, yeah, so I, I, that's, I, yeah, so that's the reason why I really like this, this scale. Up spirits, Lord Vernon's Wharf. Look at that, isn't that fantastic? Judd, that one's called. <laughs> yeah, end of the 19th century, industrial architecture, industrial engineering. That's the, the last moment when technology was in direct contact with the human spirit. Okay, a few months ago, a YouTube user called Tommy from the Bronx had what he referred to as a tag sale, which means that he was... Um, selling some of his stuff off. And most of the stuff he was selling was uh, ceramics, 
particularly ceramic decanters and toby jugs, beer steins, those kind of things. And I was really interested in, in, in this particular tax sale and these decanters and these ceramics. So a lot of it was either uh, Royal Dalton or Wedgwood or Minton. And why I find that interesting is that those, uh, those particular ceramic factories are just about 12 miles down the road from where I live in Cheshire, on the borders of Cheshire and, and uh, Staffordshire. And uh, well, not actually down the road, strictly speaking, down the canal, because there's a canal, the Trenton Mersey Canal, which goes just past my house and then goes to the potteries, uh, which is where Stoke on Trent and the Royal Dalton factory is, and all those kind of things. And then the opposite direction it goes up towards Liverpool. And this was the canal that was used originally to ship the raw materials for uh, the pottery making industry into, the, into that area and to ship the final products out. So I was really interested in watching this, um, to, you know, watching Tommy from the Bronx, thinking, here's this guy who's presumably in the Bronx, 3,000 miles where I'm, from where I'm sitting, uh, holding up these objects, which were pieces of ceramics, pieces of china. It's great stuff. Now, I was particularly interested in one piece, because as I say, I am near, near the canal, which goes to the potteries. I walk my dogs along the canal. I've shot a lot of videos on the canal. In fact, I shot a video on the canal about Tommy from the Bronx uh, when he was doing this tax sale. So I was really interested when he had this object, um, item 93, in his tag sale, which was a ceramic canal boat. So I got in touch with Tommy and I bought it, and here it is. This is the, uh, the canal boat, which is, um, it's actually a, a decanter. The top comes off, I won't take it off right now, but it is a whiskey decanter with uh, a brand called, hang on, Michter's Whiskey, 86% proof. From original Samash, Jefferson, uh, Lebanon County, PA. Brilliant. So obviously this particular piece wasn't made in the potteries in Staffordshire, just down the road from where I live, just down the canal from where I live. But it is a canal boat, and so there's this weird circular connection for me between this object, the canal where I want my dogs, YouTube, Tommy from the Bronx, 3,000 miles away, and... Uh, I don't know, ceramics and travel and the world and all those kind of things. It's a lovely thing, really nice, I really like it. And this is the whiskey that came in it. And it's really, really nice whiskey, I have to say. It's, um, it's, a, it's a sour mash whiskey, so it doesn't taste like a Scotch whiskey or an Irish whiskey. It tastes like a, like an, like a, like a bourbon. Uh, it's very nice indeed. So, uh, I should just say, actually, that I've only just received this because it was held up at Customs. I never thought that Customs and Excise would be interested in it. So, actually, on top of the price that I paid Tommy and the shipping costs, I had to pay an extra 23 quid to get this through Customs, which is far more than it's worth, but it doesn't really matter because I really like it. Anyhow, this is the whiskey in here, and it's very nice indeed. So, cheers, Tommy. All the best. Thank you.